Hi, a Fussy Wizzy Mike Kennedy, M005 Kennedy with you today. And I have a magic envelope. And what's magic about this envelope? Well, it's not made out of paper, it's made out of Tyvek. Now, Tyvek's a material that they use uh, in building, they use it as a moisture bar barrier, but it will still allow air to pass. Well, what I'm doing is I'm reading this very interesting book on mushroom growing. You know, I've been, if you've watched my videos, I've kind of gone crazy this summer with uh, foraging for mushrooms, and now it's cold. Pretty soon the snow will be here, and there'll be no mushrooms, so I decided I'm going to have to grow some. So, I got this book on Google Play called, uh, let's get the picture up here. The Essential Guide to Cultivating Mushrooms by Stephen Russell. Simple and advanced techniques for growing shiitake, oyster, lion's manes, and yatake, I don't know how to say that one, mushrooms at home. It's really good. Uh, he starts out with a method first, an easy method, that was actually developed by someone growing uh, psychedelic mushrooms who was arrested by the federal government. But it shows his technique first because it's, it's very re easy to you do. But why the Tyvek envelope? Well, mushrooms basically there's different ways to propagate them. But if you're going to propagate them inside, it usually involves if you want to get a a rapid culture of something that grows on wood, it usually involves having some sawdust. You sterilize that sawdust, then you inoculate it, or you put some of the mycelium from the mushroom you want into that container, and then you close it, put it at a certain temperature, and it will that mycelium will grow through that sawdust, colonize it, and then eventually you can take that out, open it up, and mushrooms will grow, or take it out of the container, and mushrooms will grow from it. So. Uh, one of the problems you have is that you need to retain the moisture in this container. You need air to flow back and forth because mushrooms use oxygen. And uh, you don't want any germs to get in. Well, what you can do is use two layers of Tyvek for the bacterial and moisture barrier. So all I have to do with this is trace a canning lid you know, it looks like I could get, I'm get a smaller uh, uh, pressure cooker that I picked up, so I can't do quart jars in it. I'll probably be doing plain jars, but that's fine for learning how to do it. And I'll uh, I'll cut out probably nine, and then I can use those in place of the cover. They'll go, you know, I'll fill the 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 jar with the appropriate amount of. I'm actually going to be using wood pellets because a lot of people are trying this and finding out it works. And uh, it's easy to access, easy to buy. I even have some at home that uh, my daughter bought for pet bedding. So I'm just going to fill up uh, two or three pint jars with that, with the appropriate amount of water, about 50% by weight, depending on what type of mushroom it, I'm growing. I'm going to be trying to be growing shiitake because that's what I have living mycelium from right now and uh, then instead of putting that metal lid cover on you put two layers of this Tyvek on and you pressure cook it for so long destroys any organisms that are in there and then all you have to do is under the cleanest conditions you can do it under is transfer some of that mycelium that you have into that container and let it colonize, put it at the right temperature. So uh, this envelope, you know, buying one was $1.74. A few ro huge rolls of Tyvek, which I've always wanted to get a nine by nine piece to make a huge kite with. But anyway, I just figured this is a che the cheapest way to go, buy a Tyvek envelope and cut it up. And like I say, I should get be able to do at least nine nine bottles with us. 
uh, I'm near Joanne Fabrics and just to mention another thing that this Stephen Russell mentions you can use you know the stuffing that they put in uh, uh, stuffed animals that white poly uh, polyfill stuff white you just got to find out if it's hydrophobic or hydrophilic in other words does it like water or does it not like water you want the kind that doesn't like water that repels water and then instead of using Tyvek you use the metal lid you punch a hole in it and you stuff some of that in now the advantage to that is if you have a culture that's in a syringe you can actually uh, inject that directly into your uh, your quarter pint mason jar and uh, inoculate that way, inoculate it that way without the need to open the cover and all this stuff. But I'm not going to be working with a liquid culture, but I am going to try that eventually. Uh, they say that's how you would do with spores, although it depends on your final aim. Sometimes you you initially grow things on like wheat or different seeds before you go to the the wood stage. So I'm, I'll I'm going to be investigating that a little further. I may have to actually do uh, wheat brand or rye or something like that first and grow that and then put that into sawdust. I'm not sure, but I, I'll, I'll be rereading this book. It looks, it's a very interesting book. I would really like to grow lion's mane because I'll tell you, lion's mane, if you cook it just right, tastes like seafood. It's really kind of remarkable. I couldn't believe it. I had some of that at someone's house and uh, it was just amazing. Uh, the shiitake mushrooms I've liked. I've got a bunch of oyster mushrooms in the freezer now and I, I've decided oysters aren't my favorite mushroom. But uh, I think freezing them, I kind of uh, lightly sauteed them then froze them or microwaved and froze them and I think that destroys a little bit of their character. Uh, but uh, fresh they're really nice when you cook them and brown them up. So, but right now I'll be trying shiitake because that's what I have. I'll be looking for some uh, yard sale canning jars. I've got the, the pressure cooker for four dollars. I've got this. I've got some wood pellets and uh, my my next problem is, and I just have to find the materials, is I have a heat mat for starting seeds. And I have a temperature control unit. Well, all I have to do is put those two together, and I can dial in whatever temperature I want that those jars to be at while they're either colonizing the, uh, the sawdust or wood pellets, or while they're actually fruiting and turning into mushrooms. Just a matter of changing a setting. You have a bag over the uh, thing with uh, water in there so you can keep a high humidity level. And uh, it should be interesting to try. And I want to have mushrooms this winter. And I don't, I don't want to buy them because the ones that I'm trying are just kind of extremely expensive to buy. Shiitake mushrooms. And uh, the button mushrooms don't have much of a taste. My daughter mentioned portobello mushrooms. She likes a lot, but I'm not sure uh, how they're grown. I'll have to look into that. Some of the ones you find in the store are secondary decomposers, so they grow them uh, quite differently instead of, they grow them on, some of them on manure type mixtures and things like that, and uh, they grow them in huge facilities. And some of them, some of those aren't that easy to duplicate at home. But the shiitake, lion's mane, and oysters are. So I'm going to go for shiitake first, try to learn my technique with that, and then I'm hoping to go on to lion's mane because that that's really exciting. And, you know, they have different ways that you can purchase uh, material. You can buy these syringes that have the liquid culture in them and stuff, but uh, what... Uh, one place suggested that really made sense to me is the, the book suggested you just buy a kit. You buy a kit and when that's colonized you just break part of that off and use that. So you've got a, a, a you know you have plenty of mycelium then it's not just spores or 
or something in a syringe, you get a big chunk of it. And I think the idea when you're doing mushrooms is you always have, it's like a race between mold and bacteria. Because once you sterilize something, there are things that want to grow there, okay? Things will get in there eventually, but even in opening the jar and transferring something in there, stuff is going to get in there you don't want in there. So the idea is hopefully you have enough mycelium that it can immediately overpower anything else and prevent mold from forming. But that can still happen, so it's going to be uh, quite a bit learning uh, the technique as far as uh, making maybe a little area, clean area that I can uh, wipe down hole with alcohol, put gloves on and all this other stuff, maybe even taking some of that mycelium and dipping it in bleach to kill what's on the outside, hoping that what's on the inside will still grow. So there's different, or alcohol, there's different techniques like that, but I'll, I'll look into that more when we get there. But there's my mushroom plans for the winter. I'm hoping to grow mushrooms. Bye.